This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Danny Boyle, director uh, of many a thing you've known, <laughs> uh, Slumdog Millionaire, 127 Hours, Train Spotting. Yeah, uh, you're in town to talk about Train Spotting too, T2. Um, and I want to start with a kind of broad question to begin with, just because it's something I wonder about for particularly sex successful people in Hollywood. Um, you know, after you know a successful financial film or a Academy Award or whatever, is it easier or is it harder to sort of like pick and choose what you do? Is there is there more pressure to sort of keep a certain level or is it easier because you've attained a certain level just say like, fuck it, I'm going to do whatever I want now at this point? <laughs> it works in different ways because um, I, I, there's a famous quote from Martin Scorsese who obviously has had times where he has been hugely successful and certainly adored. And he always says the genius is in the choices that you make. You know, that's the genius of it. But that's a very particular approach where you are reading scripts from, which is where the way Hollywood works. You're sure, reading yeah, scripts yeah, yeah. from lots of producers and lots of sources and things like that. And then it's about what he meant by that is that when you're successful, you get offered everything. And the genius is in the one you pick because you can only do one at a time right, and each absolutely. one takes you two years. We don't really work like that. We generate with the exception of the Steve Jobs film that I did, mm -hmm. we generate yeah. our own material, really. We don't... And, and you, I used to read scripts, and, and like when Trainspotting first came out, it was a big success, and so Hollywood sent lots of scripts, which is very flattering, and like, but we didn't really do any of them. You know, we'd flirted with Alien 4 for a while. I heard about that. That was a really and Then kind of like just thought, can't really do this. I think you Not, made a wise decision on that. Well, <laughs> I, it was a really good script and it was like, and I love the Alien movies. You know, I'm a huge like, fan as well. Resurrection kind of went to a... Uh, well, anyway, place. anyway. Um, so we um, we generate our own material. And that was the case with Probably with smart, the, with, yeah. with, with Trainspotting as well. You know, the original, we found the book and fell in love with the book and, and, and it was a tiny book at the time, a really cult book with just 2,000 copies, I think, printed across Scotland and that was it. That's but amazing. it was an extraordinary transformational experience. And then, so when you go back to it like this and it's much more famous now because of the film and, and also because of grown respect for the book, the original book, it's kind of, the, ob the pressure is not kind of, can you get it made? It's under what terms you will make it to, to protect it. Sure, so we didn't yeah. take too much money because you want to kind of be able to make the movie you want to make rather than people tell you how Edinburgh junkies behave because they live in Hollywood and they would know, wouldn't yeah, they? of course, naturally. Of course yeah. they'd know, yeah. you know. And you don't want to be... And also it's that thing that just drives you insane where everybody wants to be fucking cute all the time. All they want them to be all the time is cute. And you go, fucking you know, hell, the point about these is that these guys are really not cute. They end up being actually quite attractive but it's because they're disgusting yeah. and they don't compromise and they don't kind of do stuff for pc reasons they do stuff that's completely unacceptable under any moral code and yet because of that in spite of that you kind of like them and they mean something to you i think you know that, you bring up sort of an interesting thing i was thinking about this uh while watching the movie um there are not a lot of indie sequels. I mean, I was thinking about like, you know, Clerks, Clerks 2, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, yeah, the Before Midnight, yeah, yeah. Uh, Seven Up was actually the one that probably yeah, had yeah. sort of the closest yeah. parallels to this that I could think yeah. of. Um, well, Boyhood in a way, within the internal film yeah, it, itself. Yeah, sure, sure, exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a sort of one, one off slash sequel in and yeah, of itself. And it, but yeah. how difficult is it sort of, and I guess this sort of plays into the the doing it on a lower budget so you can control expectations, but how difficult is it to sort of manage audience expectations, like people who really love train spotting, who like essentially just want to see the same film again and try to do something unique and different with the characters and sort of maybe they're not exactly how people nostalgically remember them, but try and sort of genuinely create a story within that world that people can still enjoy yeah it's interesting because there is an illusion that people want the same thing if you give them exactly the same thing they never do they'll hate no you. But they'll they, hate you for yeah. it you know so you what you have to do is you have to give it and if you give them something completely unrecognizable they'll also hate yeah, you for it it's a, it's, that's why it's a dangerous dancing line of trying to figure out what to do with it oh and the dancing line is it's the same but different you've got to have both those things going mm. and that was really kind of what we did so there's parts of the film which are similar to the f first film, really, in a way. Sure, yeah. But they're because they're not for they're not for commercial reasons. They're because the characters 
one of the key problems with the characters, like with a lot of men, is they find it impossible not to want to repeat the past constantly. Especially that's, that's, a, that's an interesting sort of meta conversation of like, no. people want to see the same movie, you want to do something different, and yeah. yet people sort of do play out the same stuff naturally in real life all the time. So it kind of would be the same movie men, all the same Men especially, life, yeah. who drive what's in cinemas, really. Yeah. Men especially are like that. Women. Women measure out time much more sensibly than men do. And so we were able to hang on to the past. And in fact, he gets accused, Renton gets ac accused literally in the film of being a tourist in his own youth. And you can see that they, that they wallow in the kind of effortless bravure of the past and try and kind of regenerate that. You can't, of course. They're in their yeah. mid-40s. Yeah. And there is other stuff that's going to swim into focus that they have to deal with. And, and, and so it is that you get a bit of the same, but it's different as well. Well, I mean, I, th I think that was one of the things that was sort of a nice change is that, I mean, there is a lot of drug... Um, elements in the story that are still relevant and still recurring from their past, but it's not like the driving force. It's not just like, hey, let's make another movie about junkies or something like that, because, I mean, that just, yeah. that could get into a really depressing place just in and of itself yeah. like and in 20 fact, the, years later. The, the, the most, the most uh, um, comprehensive drug abuse in the film is Viagra, which yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Begbie, that's true. Begbie ingests enough Viagra in the movie which, to command him to make his head explode yeah. or something else explode. But, <laughs> um, still his head, but you know, <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a great point. What is it like sort of revisiting this with this group of actors and yourself? Because it feels like you guys have not come full circle feels like the wrong term, but like when this all began, you guys were all fairly small indie, yeah, you know, sure. sort of popping at that same time. And now you're all like, you know, Academy Award winning directors, like Ewan was in Star Wars, like <laughs> I mean, Robert Carlyle and Jane Lee Miller have been in like TV series for like multiple multiple years yeah. um what is it like to have all these sort of like major people returning to I, I, indie seems like an incorrect way of describing it but essentially like an in their indie yeah. roots for this project is it is it difficult to sort of just make it because everyone's so scattered with all their schedules is it difficult because everyone is sort of not to say egos but different perspective of themselves like what is it like to sort of try and bring all that you know lightning in a bottle back into that bottle well we we kind of we were very smart because we set out, in the way that we'd set out the script, that it would be about all four of them equally. And, and it is weird the way it is about all four of them. It's not, there's not one of them you, you can yeah. describe as a supporting character. They are, they each have a, a major driving force mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, and absolutely. there's a poignancy about their individual stories as well, which is really touching. Um, and we carried that into the contract. We said, we're not negotiating with anybody or with any agents, because that's where all that stuff comes from, Yeah, basically. We're, we're saying everybody's paid the same, everybody's favoured nations, as they say, which means everybody's exactly the same with Smart. everything, yeah. a lot. And it doesn't matter if you're doing more time on the movie, it maybe that there's more shooting days than someone else, None of, nothing matters. Everybody's paid the same. It's not a huge amount of money, but if the film works, you'll all get an equal back end, and a proper, realistic sure. back yeah, end yeah, as well. Yeah. So that kind of dealt with all those concerns, and it weirdly like so many things on a film that when you create restrictions like that they're liberating bizarrely interesting and the one thing that isn't liberating on a movie is when you can have everything you want <laughs> uh, because it believe me it you know when you can have as much money as you want it you think that's it I, i'll have everything i want it'll be great i'll be free you're you're not it's the opposite whereas when you create the box and they said we've got to work in this box everyone everybody's like yahoo great and we'll work out how to get out of the box and that'll be part of the fun of it you know and uh, that is an interesting sort of parallel of like y y i mean to do everything you kind of want ever like to be that way but if you don't have that creative inspiration you can't take advantage of all that money so it's sort of like yeah. Catch and, and, twenty two, and creative inspiration gets crushed by all the co all the commerce that comes with taking two hundred million dollars. You know, because the contracts themselves are enough to weigh down the whole film. You know, you spend most of the time dealing with contracts rather than actually making the film. You know. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this, Danny. Uh, the film is T two Trains by Two. It comes out in Seattle on March twenty fourth. Indeed. Yeah. Um, is it wide at the twenty fourth, or is it just? 
scattered I'm, amongst cities. I've absolutely no idea. Someone's signaling behind. But <laughs> 31st wide on the 31st. Okay. Oh, um, right, well, okay. everyone definitely go check it out. Oh, well, should, everybody should check it out yeah. all the Either time way. anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go twice yeah, as yeah. well. When go, it's come wide to Seattle and on the 24th. <laughs> go to elsewhere on the 31st. <laughs> Seems like the best of both worlds. Uh, well, thank you so much for doing this. I wish you the best of luck with the film and I can't wait to see what you do next. Cool. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.